chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again prove that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to its radius let me first of all define what a tangent is what as what a secant is suppose this is a circle with center o and this is a point outside the circle point p if i draw a line that cuts the circle then this cutting line is called a secant to the circle this line secant is cutting it at point a and cutting it at point b pab is called a secant to this circle a secant is a line that cuts the circle in two points different from a secant secant is a tangent supposing from the same point p i draw a line that just touches the circle just touches the circle and passes away then a line that is touching it is called a tangent so if i keep on moving this secant towards the outside periphery this point will become a dash this point will become b dash and as i keep it moving out and out i will soon find that it begins to touch the circle and then at that point this secant changes into a tangent the portion of the chord that is cut by the secant can be called the intercept this can be called the intercept or the chord in this case the intercept is this and if i push the sequent outside then the intercept becomes smaller it continues to become smaller and when it reduces to zero the same sequent becomes a tangent so we can say that a sequent having an intercept of zero is called a tangent we can also alternatively say that a tangent is a secant in which the intercept is limiting towards zero both the secant and tangent they carry a meaning only if the point from which they are drawn is lying outside the circle if this is a point q i can draw a tangent like this i can draw one more tangent like this so i can observe that from an external point q i can draw two tangents to a circle but i can draw as many secants as i like as you can see from this drawing that you can have as many infinite number of secants from an external point q to a circle so i can write that tangent from an external point from an external point touches a circle at its point of contact this is one thing about the tangent the second thing is that two tangents can be drawn to a circle from an external point from an external point and about the secant secant cuts the circle 
cuts the circle at two points and infinite infinite number of seconds can be drawn for a circle and lastly of course we can say that a secant with an intercept of 0 of 0 is a tangent so these are the basic definitions about the tangent and secant but things obviously don't stop here people have done research on this from the BC's <coughs> thousands of years going back people have derived various results for the secants and tangents and some of them are really astonishing we'll be trying to prove some of them so that our understanding about tangents and secants it improves and we are prepared for our examination let us start with a few theorems on tangents right now prove that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to its radius we can prove this fact let us see how we can prove suppose this is a circle and let us suppose that this is a tangent to the circle touching it at point P this point P is called the point of contact and let this be the center of the circle and if I join O and P then I have to prove that this angle is 90 degrees ok now let us take some point Q on the tangent now since this tangent touches only at point P this point Q will have to lie outside the circle so we can simply say that all points all points on the tangent all points on the tangent except P they lie outside the circle this is a very clear observation that we can make because tangent is touching the circle at just the point of contact therefore any point let it be Q let it be Q dash further away or closer to this side all these points they will lie outside the circle which which means that the distance of distance of only P is shortest from the center of the circle now since every other point is lying outside the circle and P is lying on the circle obviously the distance of every other point will be greater than the distance of this point P from O so P is at the shortest distance from O and from our basic theorems we know that the shortest distance between a point and a line is the perpendicular distance therefore this angle has to be 90 degrees which implies angle OPQ must be 90 degrees if you have a point and any line the shortest distance between them will be the 90 degrees angle that is like in this case the shortest distance between O and P that will O and this line will be the perpendicular 90 degrees distance therefore angle OPQ must be 90 degrees let us move to our next theorem now prove that the lengths of tangents drawn from an external point 
to a circle R equal. Let us suppose this is a circle and this is an external point P and we are drawing a tangent to this circle like this and we are drawing another tangent to the circle like this and let the point of contact for this be Q and let the point of contact for this be Q dash. Let this be the center of the circle. Prove that the lengths of the tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal. We have to prove we have to prove that PQ is exactly equal to PQ dash. P is an external point from where two tangents have been raised on the circle. We have to prove that PQ will definitely be equal to PQ dash. This fact can be easily proved solely with the help of mathematical reasoning and let us see how we can do. At the outset, let us join O and Q and also O and Q dash. Now you will see how the things will simplify out. Now we have just now proved that the radius will be perpendicular to the tangent. So this angle will be 90 and on the same pattern this angle will also be 90 degrees. Now since OQ and OQ dash are the radii of the same circle, we can mark them equal by these ticks. Or we can alternatively write R against both of them that will tell that this length is equal to this length. Next, let us join O and P also. Now when we join O and P, we obtain two triangles. This is one triangle OQP and OQ dash P is the second triangle. So the steps we can write here join OQ and OQ dash. This is one thing and also join O and P. This is what we have done. This is what we have done. Now I assert that triangle OPQ is congruent to triangle O P Q dash. That is this upper triangle is congruent to this lower triangle. This is my assertion but let me prove it also. This side is equal to this side. O Q is equal to O Q dash is equal to radius because they are the radii of the same circle. Another thing is that angle OQP is equal to angle OQ dash P is equal to 90 degrees that we have just now seen. And the third thing is that the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle and this right angle triangle it is common to both the triangles. OP is shared by both the right angle triangles. We can therefore write OP is equal to OP. It is common and shared between both the right angle triangles. So by right angle hypotenuse and side. By the RHS rule these two triangles are congruent. And obviously once these two have been proved congruent then the remaining side PQ of this triangle and PQ dash of this triangle the remaining sides have to be equal which implies PQ has to equal PQ dash which proves the fact that we were trying to prove that the lengths of tangents from an external point to a circle they are both equal in measure. We cannot underestimate the importance of the concepts of congruency and similarity which are central to this Euclid geometry that we have been discussing. In every case similarity or congruency was used to prove new results.
So you have to go through all those videos on congruency and similarity that we have already done for you. But right now we have proved that the lengths of tangents from an external point to a circle they are equal because the triangles so formed are congruent and therefore they have to be equal. Let us move on to our next question now. Prove that the parallelogram circumscribing a circle is a rhombus. Let me first of all draw a diagram then I will come to the facts of this. This is a circle and let me draw This is A, this is B, this is C and this is D. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Prove that parallelogram circumscribing a circle. That is if a parallelogram includes a circle then that parallelogram must be a rhombus. Now what is a rhombus? I will come to that but let me first of all draw this as the center O of the circle and because this is a parallelogram AB is parallel to CD one thing. Another thing is that angle A is equal to angle C. So I will just collect the facts first since ABCD is a parallelogram angle A has to be equal to angle C because a property of parallelogram is that the opposite angles are equal to each other. Now on the rough side let me talk a little bit about parallelograms. Supposing this is a parallelogram that we have drawn. We can obviously see that this side is parallel to this, this is parallel to this. But the interesting thing is that even though sides are parallel and opposite angles are equal the sides adjacent sides may not be equal. For example this is very long, this is very short. So a parallelogram is a parallel figure but the adjacent sides are not equal. A rhombus on the other hand is a special case of a parallelogram in which all the four sides they are equal to each other. In a parallelogram this side is obviously equal to this and this is equal to this but adjacent sides are not equal. If the adjacent sides become equal then all the four sides will become equal but there is no guarantee that this angle will be 90. If this angle becomes 90 then the rhombus becomes a square. So the difference between rhombus and square is that the angles of a rhombus are not 90 but sides are all equal. In case of a square, sides are also equal and all angles are 90. That is the only difference between a square and a rhombus. So what we have to prove is that if a circle can be put inside a parallelogram then all the four sides of that parallelogram have to be equal. If four sides are not equal we cannot put a circle inside a parallelogram. Let me show you practically. Now this is a long parallelogram, this long side, small side. Obviously you can see that if I try to put a circle it won't touch these two sides. The only way for it to touch would be that all the four sides are equal. But this is by inspection, by intuition but a mathematical proof is required. Let us try to prove that. There is a small another point which you should also know before I begin the proof. Supposing this is a circle, this is the center O and this is an external point and I have drawn a tangent to this and a tangent to this. And suppose this is this perpendicular and this is this perpendicular and if I join this then I and this is point P then I have just now proved in my previous question that this is equal to this because this triangle is congruent to the lower triangle. Both these triangles are congruent to each other. This fact we have already used and discussed in the proof that we did just before. But 
for you here something interesting is also there if these two triangles this triangle and this are congruent then this angle has to be equal to this angle this and this angle they both have to be equal because this triangle is congruent to the lower triangle so what we mean is that if the center of a circle is joined to the point p from where tangents have been drawn then it will bisect the angle included between the two tangents so let me show you in this case what will happen if this point a tangents have been drawn this and this now if i join o and a if i join o and a then this angle and this angle will be equal to each other because this line will bisect the angle a the angle between the two tangents so i can write this is angle a by 2 if you are still not clear come back here again this this triangle is similar to this triangle therefore this angle has to be equal to this and this op will be the bisector of this angle and i am therefore justified in writing this portion as a by 2 similarly let me join o and c also together and once i join them i will be justified in writing this angle as c by 2 so we can write join o to a so that angle a is bisected in fact i should not write so that because when you join o to a the angle will automatically be bisected and similarly also join o to c to bisect this language might be confusing also join o to and a o to c i should write this will bisect this will bisect the angle c so this will be c by 2 and this will be a by 2 this is one thing that is available to us right now next let me drop this o to the point of contact when i join them this point of contact will automatically be perpendicular here because a tangent is perpendicular to the radius and let this point be p similarly let me join this point of contact q to the center so that this angle a will be 90 degrees now so far what i have is this is one triangle apo this is a right angle this is a by 2 and this is another triangle this is a right angle and this is c by 2 now i don't know whether you can see it or not i will assert that triangle apo is congruent to triangle oqc this triangle is congruent to this triangle let me show you why first of all this is the radius this is the radius both are equal to each other secondly this is 90 this is 90 so one angle is equal to the other angle thirdly this is a by 2 this is c by 2 but since abcd is a parallelogram a by 2 will be equal to c by 2 because a is equal to c as i wrote here itself so by the double as rule angle angle side rule this triangle is congruent to this triangle if this is so then the corresponding side ap which implies ap will be equal to this side ap will be equal to qc so this is one fact that i have so far deduced that this portion of this edge will be equal to this portion of this edge and my ultimate target is that since this is already a parallelogram i just have to prove that 
this edge is equal to this edge and I have successfully proved that one portion AP is equal to the other portion QC of the other edge. Now let us turn our attention to this point B. We know that B is an external point and BP is a tangent and BQ is a tangent. And we also know that tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal. Therefore, BP is known to be equal to BQ. BP is equal to BQ tangents are equal. B is an external point and tangents from the external point to a circle they will be equal therefore BP is equal to BQ. This is the second fact. Now we will add them. When we add 1 and 2 what we will get is AP plus BP. AP plus BP. So what we will get adding adding what we will get AP plus BP will be the entire arm AB equal to QC and BQ. QC is this part and BQ is this part. Both of them added will make it BC. So we have ended up proving that this edge of the parallelogram will have to be equal to this edge of this parallelogram and which proves that this parallelogram has to be a rhombus. These proofs are quite interesting and they will help you develop good skills of reasoning of mathematical reasoning. Let us move to our next proof now.